Good afternoon. We have um, two general announcements. What you can do is take the bulletin with you. They have the, uh, all the things that we have planned for the vigil, the visitation, the funeral of Father Vic. Uh, it's in the bulletin. And as you leave, there's a sheet of paper that um, outlines what he had in his will for where he would like gifts to be um, given to by you in lieu of flowers. So take one of those with you. It also has uh, some additional funeral information. We had uh, hoped to have a farewell reception for Deacon Larry um, that was to have taken place after the 10:15 mass tomorrow. It will not be taking place. Uh, he has asked that we have postponed it out of respect for the tragic death of Father Vic. And once we reschedule it, we'll make another announcement for that. The parish offices will be closed on Tuesday from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Um, during the visitation uh, and funeral of uh, Father Vic. There are handouts, as I said, in the back of church with details of the visitation and funeral mass. Um, we're, we're calling the vigil an ecumenical vigil, and uh, many public figures have asked to offer us their condolences and speak about their relationship with Father Vic. And so it will be kind of a, a celebration for everyone to attend if you'd like to invite some friends who are not of our parish. Finally, um, after each Mass this weekend, we will have a couple of staff members uh, in the gathering space after Mass. If you uh, just want to sit and talk with somebody, um, if you need a, a shoulder to cry on, if you uh, need to spend some time grieving, they're there for you. Uh, they have badges that say they're staff members, and uh, please take advantage of it. Our gathering song is number 744, Gather Us In, 744. We begin then. Uh, this was the Mass that Father Vic was to have taken. Um, the other priests asked me to take his Masses for this weekend. Um, I consider it a privilege to um, fill that vacancy uh, in this celebration. And so we begin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit here present with us be with all of you. And with your spirit. Gathered around the table of God's word and the table of the Eucharist, let us pray today, today that we too will choose life. Let us truly become the body and blood of Christ, broken for the life of the world. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the path to the kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the truth. All we need to live a holy life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the life, the way of truth that conquers death. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to his everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, peace on earth, earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. For your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace on earth. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command, to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness can be found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. We don't hear much from Joshua in uh, our Sunday readings or our weekend readings, but in this first reading, Moses must be dead because Joshua is the undisputed leader. All the tribes and all their leaders have gathered in a solemn religious assembly, for the people are standing before God. Joshua places before the people a choice that will shape their self-identity and the path that they and their descendants will travel for the rest of their lives. They can worship their ancestral gods, the idols, or they can worship the one Lord who is tied neither to their cultural past nor to their geographic present. Joshua's statement of choice is, decip is decisive. We will serve the Lord. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve, the gods your fathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers out of the land of Egypt, out of the state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is number 835, O oh, Taste and See, 835. O oh, taste, taste and see the goodness of God, the blessings of God, O oh, taste. Taste, Taste and, and see the goodness of God, the, the blessings of God. I will sing God's praises all the days that I shall live. My soul will glory in my God, the lowly will hear and be glad. Oh, glorify God's name with me, Together let us rejoice. Oh, taste, taste, taste and, and see the, the goodness, goodness of God, God, the blessings of God. Oh, taste, taste and see the goodness of God, the blessings of God. For God has heard my anguished cries, and delivered me from all my foes. Oh, look to God that you might shine, your faces be radiant with joy. Oh, taste, taste, taste and see the goodness of God, the blessings of God. Oh, taste, Taste and see the goodness of God, the blessings of God. 
When the poor cry out, God hears and saves them, rescues them from their distress. God's angel watches near to those who look to their God to save them. Oh, taste, taste and see the goodness of God, the blessings of God. Oh, taste, taste and see the goodness of God, the blessings of God. In this reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, it's written in a different cultural context than ours. And because of that, it's really hard for us to understand, we modern listeners. We have to listen closely to what it is that Paul is really saying. First, he uses marriage as a metaphor for understanding the relationship between Christ and the church. And then he flips it around and he uses a relationship between Christ and the church as an analogy for marriage. He does so to enhance the dignity of each of the human partners. Christ loved the church enough to give his life for it. This is a degree of commitment to each other that Paul envisions for husbands and wives. Go ahead. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church, he himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Many 
of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, this saying is hard to accept. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then turned to the twelve and said, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom should we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Messiah the Holy One of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many of those who are listening to Jesus who had just spoken about giving his body as food and his blood as drink, had a hard time believing that he, like the manna of old, had descended from God, from heaven, in the first place. He doesn't say in today's passage that they will witness his ascent back to heaven, he asks them how they would respond if it would happen. Both his descending and his ascending applies, implies that he is a heavenly being, the very claim that scandalized his hearers in the first place. He implies that since they didn't believe he descended from heaven in the first place, they would probably remain unconvinced even if he ascended back to heaven. He knew some would accept him for who he really is, was, and others would not. Because, of some of his, because some of his disciples were angered by his statements, they no longer followed him. In the midst of our own shock, and grief at the sudden death of Father Vic Capriolo, God places before us this choice as he did in the Old Testament through Joshua. You're going to do things the way you did before? Or are you going to follow, really follow, the one true God. Just as he said through Jesus in the gospel, just as he said through Paul in that second reading, it was not customary for a man to leave his father and mother and join his wife, as the reading really says. It was the wife who would leave her family and go to the house, the paternal house 
of her husband. And not only accept her husband, but accept the authority of the patriarch, his father or grandfather, the oldest male of the household. And Paul is saying, no, this new thing that we are as Christians are a symbol not of the wife leaving her family to be one with her husband. The husband has to let go of the former way and join his wife. And the two will become one, not part of her household or his household, but they will become their own in following Jesus. The question before us, God places in front of us. Do you or do you not believe in my love, my desire only for the best for you, even after this death that you have experienced? Do you think I wanted this to happen? That I wanted to punish him or hurt you? Is it just fate? Did he turn over the wrong card in the game of life? What is the purpose of his life, of your life? God's asking these questions of us. He is asking these questions of us. Do you believe in your own resurrection from the dead and your own life everlasting? What do you intend to make of the impact of Father Vic's life on you? How will you allow this encounter that God has given us change you and your impact on others? In the gospel, as Jesus watches some of his disciples leave, he turns to the apostles to see their response. He neither asks them to stay or gives them permission to go. He simply asks them as he simply asks us, do you want to leave too? We rattle through our own profession of faith so quickly that we forget he is asking us, do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection from the dead, and your own life everlasting? Father Vic is noted for his humor. And Linus came up to me just before Mass, and he said, Father, did, Father, Father Vic would do this. He, he, he reads my jokes. And I look at this, and I think, oh. All right. It fits in here. Just wait. A priest officiating at a funeral started his remarks by saying, we are gathered today to pay homage to a good man. He was a kind man, a man loved by everyone, a man who treasured his family as they did him. The widow of the deceased leaned over to her grandson and whispered, sweetheart, go up and make sure it's your grandpa in that coffin. It's all about relationships here. The disciples' relationship to Jesus Christ allowed them to make a leap of faith because they trusted him.
Assuming the role of the leader of the community, when Jesus asked, are you going to go too? Peter makes three statements of faith. And he does so in the name of the rest of the 12. In the first, he says, to whom should we go? There's no one else, because there's nobody else quite like Jesus. In the second statement of faith, he shows that he has accepted what Jesus has just been teaching about eternal life. And in his third, he brings his profession of faith to an amazing con conclusion. He uses a messes Masonic title to identify Jesus. Even though some followers might choose to leave, he is speaking for others, for the 12. Is he speaking for us too? He is convinced of the trustworthiness of Jesus' claim. It is our relationship with Father Vic, whether we wave to him as he sped by on the bike, or listen to his jokes, or heard his laugh across a room, or invited him to officiate at our marriage, or the baptism of our children. Or at a first communion of our grandchildren, we laughed with him when he compared his own size with the first communicants and said he was quite at home with them because he too was short. He knew what was, life was like for them. It's our relationship with him that makes his sudden death so shocking. But it's because of my relationship with good and holy men of women, men and women, people of faith and integrity, and not afraid of living what they believe, like Father Vic, whom I have seen and I have felt and touched that I am able to respond to this tragedy as a grace and able to respond to the question that Jesus poses to us too. Do you want to leave too? I can muster up the courage to say through my own tears with Peter, to whom should we go? You have the words of eternal life. I have come to believe and I am convinced that you are the Messiah, the Holy One of God. And I can say to you, I am so grateful in this tragedy to be surrounded by people of faith like you. Your generous outpouring of condolences and support to me, to our staff, to his family, to one another. The ministers and people of other congregations stopping us in the street because they know he is our pastor and they say, we're so sorry at your loss. I don't know about you, but I am so touched and so blessed by what this community, what you and the people around you are responding to through this death. We say, to whom should we go? You have the words of everlasting life. 
And we have come to believe, and we are convinced, we are convinced that you are the Messiah, the Holy One of God, the first fruits of all who await the resurrection of the dead. I believe in this because of my relationship with Father Vic. And through him and others like him and you, my relationship with Jesus Christ. God bless you all. And so identified with one another, we don't use the word we, but we stand as one community and we declare, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We stand together in faith and we reaffirm our commitment to God as we pray for the needs of the church and those held deep in our hearts. Our response is bread of life, hear our prayer. For the church, for all bishops and pastors, for deacons and all ministers to the poor, for ministers of worship and those who care for the sick, we pray. Bread of life, hear our prayer. For nations crushed by debt, that the community of nations help restore them to financial health, we pray. Bread of life, hear our prayer. For safety and security for all our military men and women, for the restoration of peace and security for all nations, for the innocent victims of war, we pray. Bread of life, hear our prayer for husbands and wives, that they may grow in a sacrificial love that cherishes one another, and so be living signs to all of Christ's love for the church, we pray. Bread of life, hear our prayer. For students returning to their college or university, and for those who are leaving home for the first time, for opportunities to seek after wisdom and for the safety and well-being of all young people, we pray. Bread of life, hear our prayer. In gratitude for Deacon Larry Hughes' dedicated service to Holy Family Parish, may he enjoy his retirement years, we pray. Bread of life, hear our prayer.
for all who have died, especially for Father Victor R. Capriolo, Francis Brooks, Robert Erickson, Thomas Bracewell, and Colleen McCullen, who died this past week, and for those remembered at this Mass, David Parizzo, we pray. Bread of life, hear our prayer. And for all our own personal intentions, we pray. Bread of life, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, hear the prayers of your people this day. May we learn from the example of the saints and the wise ones who chose to seek you above all things. We pray always in Jesus' name, amen. Please join in singing number 843, Look Beyond, 843. Look beyond the bread you eat, see your Savior and your Lord. Look beyond the cup you drink, see his love poured out as blood. Give us a sign that we might believe in you. Moses had manna from the sky. Look beyond the bread you eat. See your Savior and your Lord. Look beyond the cup you drink. See his love poured out his blood. I am the bread which from the heavens came. Those who eat this bread will never die. Look beyond the bread you eat. See your Savior and your Lord. Look beyond the cup you drink, see his love poured out his blood. The bread I give you will be my very flesh, my blood will truly be your drink. Look beyond the bread you eat, see your Savior and your Lord. Look beyond the cup you drink, see his love poured out as blood. The uh inscription on the bottom of this chalice says, from his beloved parents, Samuel and Julia Capriolo, to Reverend Victor Capriolo, May 29th, 1971. When a priest is ordained, very often the family gives him his first chalice. And this is Father Vicks. that uh, he just put with all the other chalices over at, at uh, St. Peter's and allowed anybody to use just because uh, it wasn't for himself that he got these things. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. It is only through your goodness that we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of our human hands, who will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray then, sisters and brothers all, 
that these, our gifts, these, our gifts, may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise, the glory of God's name, for our good, the good of all the church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously upon us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and merciful God, and faithful God, for you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and the poor, for the sick and for the sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted, by word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters wherever they may be. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name. We sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of Heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and, one, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on that night of the Last Supper, he took the bread and he said the blessing. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of the new and eternal covenant, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate this memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Benedict, our Pope, Jerome, our bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people, your Son has made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us the words and actions needed to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom to justice and peace, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brother Victor, who has fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith only you have known. Admit them all to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to the eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the apostles, the martyrs, with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the twelve, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, 
Jesus, bread of life, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, cup of hope, you take away the sins of the world. Have Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we, for he invites us not just to this meal, but to his everlasting heavenly feast of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and I shall. Our communion song is number 850. We come to your feast. Number 850. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for Victor Capriolo, your servant and priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries here on earth, you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. This isn't a time to be alone. We need each other. Um, it seems to be something that this parish does very well, is checking up on one another and getting the word out. I announced for the first time at the 7 o'clock Mass at Father's death, and the medical examiner heard about it just a little bit later over at Shriners. So, so keep talking to each other. Uh, cry on each other's shoulders. Uh, check to see if any of each other are doing well. This is, this is what we need to do as we are a symbol of Christ's presence in our community. The Lord be with you all. With your spirit. May the soul of Father Victor Capriolo and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Our celebration here is ended. Let us share it with the world we meet. Thanks be to God. There are a couple of staff members out in the vestibule. If you, if you want a shoulder to cry on, if you want to talk to somebody, they're right out there. They're there for you. Our closing song is number 678, City of God. 678. Oh,
new day is dawning for all those who weep. The people in darkness have seen a great light. The Lord, our longing, has conquered the night. Let us be. Has called us.